So as part of my prep for uh, the next sofa launch, 3.4, which should be out by the time you're seeing this, uh, there's a lot of uh, just stuff I have to do to prep for that launch. And one of the things I have to do is uh, update the App Store screenshots. So when you go to the App Store to view the, the page for sofa, it has all the screenshots so you can get a preview of what the app does, what it looks like, that kind of thing. So. Uh, I need to add a few features to that, or well, maybe one feature specifically. Um, and I actually want to update the style of it a little bit as well. So I thought it might be fun to just show you how I do that. Okay, so here we are in Figma. What you're seeing here, these are the screenshots uh, that are currently existing in the App Store, right? So it's just in here. And if I zoom out, you can see there's different sizes that you uh, that you need to, and they'll show on different uh, device sizes when people. So if someone has like a big iPhone, they'll see bigger screenshots. If they have a smaller one, or if they have an iPad, they'll see different uh, different sizes of that. So there's just a few different ones here. They all same say, especially the iPhone. These are all the same content, just different sizes. Uh, and then the iPad, slightly slightly different content, but basically the same thing. But there's one feature that I wanna add specifically to this, which is a shared list or a collaborative list. So that, that's kind of a big deal. The thing I wanna play with here is the overall style and aesthetic. So as I've been kind of working with uh, the Sofa brand with the website, posting on social, and then uh, with various marketing materials on the App Store, we had a better sense for uh, what the brand should look like, how it should be represented. And one of the things I did this year was, I don't post on social as much as I probably should, but uh, one of the things I did was to kind of highlight some specific features. I made these, these images that I could share on uh, Instagram, Twitter, I really was liking the playfulness in this approach. So, you know, we have the the new Kansas uh, typeface, which is uh, heavily inspired from Cooper Black, which is great typeface. Um, but it, I, I like the way it combines this typography with uh, screenshots of the actual UI, and then these kind of handwritten elements or hand-drawn elements over it to kind of highlight specific things. So. This is feeling very um, cozy, approachable, um, and it feels more like a person made this, right? Like I'm one person who makes this, and I'm not necessarily going for the same aesthetic as a company like Apple or Google, which is very technical and precise. Uh, I wanna show that, hey, I'm one person working on this, and uh, you know, there's a, there's a human touch here. So I was really kind of digging this approach, and um, I thought, I was like, oh, okay, maybe I could apply this now to the App Store screenshots. So what I started to do, if we go over to this is, so this is the new feature I want to sh uh, highlight, which is uh, share with family and friends. What's nice about this is instead of just having a headline where, you know, I could just have this device and it just says share with family and friends, but you may not really notice in the UI itself what that actually means because you're just looking at a screen. But what's nice is with these little elements, I can say, you know, shares shares via iCloud, right? And it points directly to the, the button that someone will actually press to share a list. The idea is that this is uh, showing and demonstrating that, that feature, but also teaching someone exactly how to do it. So whenever they download the app, they will know exactly right away how to share a list. And that should be fairly common because I'm, I'm kind of following the pattern that you see in Apple Notes or Reminders. So as you can see, this is kind of like the newish style that I wanna go for here. And then I have all these other screenshots. So I thought, let's just kind of go through it and update a few of these and see how this goes. Now, what I'm doing with this first pass, so essentially how I'm approaching this is I have stuff that is already designed, right? So I have these things, this is what exists. And these are very straightforward, right? It's very templated, it's like, headline, screenshot, headline, screenshot, right? All the way through, right? Same thing all the way through. And if we look back to these tweets, like these are much more playful. So, you know, the the uh, some of the screenshots are tilted a little bit. We have the handwriting font. Um, it's not even quite like centered all the way. So it's a little, a little skewed. What I'm doing with these is I'm just doing a first pass 
just to kind of get the rough idea in there for each one of these screens. And then I'll go back and do another pass just to kind of really tidy things up and like adjust it. Like, you know, this is way too close to the top here. So I need to adjust that. I don't know if I actually like that, like Charlie Brown swiggle thing. Uh, might be a little too, a little too jagged there. But yeah, so I just want to get the general idea down for each one of these screens as I go through this and then uh, go back and do another pass. So I have the quick first pass at uh, kind of this new style. So I'm gonna go through and do a second pass and see where I can uh, make things a little bit more fun and, and kind of push it. Now one of the things I'm thinking through is, um, if you notice before with this current approach where it's basically a template, all the text is the same size. Um, in the same position. So as you're swiping through, your your eye literally stays in the same place and you can kind of read those things really quick and you can see the screens really quick. And one of the things I wanted to play with is can I add a little bit more chaos into it? And does that does that hurt the the kind of flow for each screen or does that make each screen maybe a little more interesting. Cause I don't, I don't know how deep people go when swiping with these things. Usually carousels are not the most, uh, you don't get too far into them. People don't go that far. So you kind of want to get your, your most important things at the front there. But I, I want to see if adding a little bit more where each screen is, is maybe slightly a little bit different where it'll entice people to keep swiping. So here's a good one here where one place to organize your downtime. And I really want to highlight the one place but the placement of this is uh, kind of crappy. So, all right, so that's good. So I got a little bit more space there and that feels pretty good. And I do like, I do like how these screens are like slightly tilted a little bit in this one. But you have to, you kind of have to do it though. If you do it too subtly, uh, it'll look like an accident and that's not what we want. We want it to look intentional. Basically what I'm doing here with the different colors and text. So, you know, some is the sofa blue and the others are just, you know, like a dark gray. I'm trying to highlight very specific words here. So when people are scanning this, they're going to see one place, right? And that's the thing I wanted to really highlight within this screen here, that sofa is one place to organize your downtime, right? The to organize your downtime is secondary to the overall message of, hey, I want you to really remember that like sofa is one place, right, for all this stuff. Throw it on the pile, right? So, and, and these are starting to highlight like specific features or more unique features to sofa where you don't necessarily have the pile in other places. So I'm also uh, trying to start educating people on um, what these various things are called and then what they do as well. Now, again, this is the new feature and one that really drove the change with all of these screenshots because I needed to add this anyway. Um, I don't update screenshots for every single update. It's only really major ones when there's something new to say. So this is really what, what drove it. You know, I've gone back and forth between, uh, should this be called sharing or collaboration? Because I, those can be used interchangeably, but I've gone with sharing because collaboration feels like a work term and well, it is a work term. This is not a work thing. This is a downtime thing. This is kind of like the anti-work tool. And I don't, I don't want to really bring that language into this kind of thing. So I'm trying to be very careful with, with the words I use here. You know, I wonder, do I really need this little text here? Probably not. When it comes to the rotation, I want the rotation to be like a, like an even odd or tick tock kind of thing, right? So this one is tilting that way, this one's tilting this way, then this one's tilting this way. So it's just kind of like rocks back and forth for each one. So you get a nice little flow when you do this. So as you can see, what I'm doing here is, again, I had the initial like rough thing kind of going through this and just slowly starting to, uh, to refine these each one as we go through it. Now we are getting to these ones. And this is where I wanted to play with Oh, does it have to be this this more templative feel? And when I say template, it's not bad. Um, but does it have to be this like header image, header image, header image thing? Uh, is there room to play here with some of this stuff? And I think so. So this one's kind of interesting because like the main thing I wanted to highlight on this screen is that you can add almost anything, right? You can add all these different kinds of things. So apps, books. TV shows, video games, all that stuff, right? 
The idea here is like, hey, you can add almost anything to this app. And within the UI, I want to point to uh, this like plus button and this menu because that's where you do that. You tap that big button and that is how you can start to add these things. So again, I'm trying to look for ways where I can um, explain the feature and what this thing does, but also educate someone so when they get into the app, uh, they know what to do. And again, not everyone's gonna look at these screenshots, but for the people that do, they're kind of learning about what the app does, which is uh, you know kind of nice. So one of the benefits of having this kind of break here like this, where it goes to a completely new layout, and this is an assumption here, but one thought is like, okay, so I've if I'm going through these screens, I've looked at three screens in a row. Layout-wise, they're basically the same thing, right? Content's different, but they're they're basically the same layout. If I just kept going with that, there's a good chance that you know, your eyes start to glaze over, you're not actually reading what's there, you're just kind of like, yeah, okay, cool. The idea is that if I pick only a few screens to have more unique layouts, that can make someone kind of pause and and maybe take a look a little bit longer at something uh, and hopefully draw their interest in that kind of thing. Again, that's, that's an assumption, kind of hard to test as well with, uh, you know, you don't really get those that data from the App Store, so. So this is feeling kind of good. I'm gonna have to come back to this thing here because I'm not really digging that. And I think for some of these other ones, I think what I'll do is like this, this format is actually working pretty well. I have like a, a nice template for most of the screens and then have a few screens that are maybe a little bit more unique. Like, you know, I have this one here, this uh, made by a real person. The reason this is here is not because I'm so gorgeous, but because I really want people to know that this this isn't like some big tech tech company who's making this thing. It's me. It's it's just me, and uh, you know the idea is to hopefully build a relationship with the the fans and the customers of Sofa. So I've gotten through the rest of the screens here, uh, except for this last one. But if you remember what I said earlier, uh, carousels where you swipe, 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 swipe horizontally, they don't usually perform super well. I want to get my good stuff closer to the front if I can. And one of the things I'm thinking about swapping here is this uh, just enough detail screen and the remind yourself with a sticky screen. The reason for that is because one of the other new features in 3.4, now when you look at movies or TV shows, their detail screen, it'll tell you where you can watch them, which is pretty sick. So that comes from uh, Just Watch that API. So I think I'm at a place where I am maybe 90% there. There's a little bit of uh, zhuzhing that needs to happen still. Overall, I'm liking how this is feeling. This is feeling very friendly, very approachable. Uh, there's enough interesting screens in here. I might tweak some of these a little bit more, but I'm liking where this is ending up. But yeah, I think this is like a good mix of templated screens and also some uh, some more unique screens to highlight certain features certain key features. And then even the templated screens, I think with the um, the hand-drawn elements, it, it doesn't make them feel as templated, right? They, they don't feel like, oh, it's, this is the same screen over and over again, right? And then even the way the uh, screenshots are kind of going back and forth as well. I'm pretty happy with this. And then my next step is essentially apply these changes to all the other screen sizes here, which is mostly just like a copy paste thing and then uh, resizing. So it's not super enjoyable, but the hard part is basically over. And then once that's done, I will make uh, iPad versions of those screens. So that is more launch prep that I'm going through. Um, and this is essentially the process for how I make screenshots for the App Store. Uh, there's much simpler ways to do this and much faster ways to, to do this. You don't have to make these um, screens. You can literally just take screenshots. Uh, of your app and, and upload those. But uh, I really view the App Store as it's a marketing page and it's an extension of the website and a lot of times will be maybe the only marketing type thing that uh, a potential customer will see. So I am I want to put the time and energy and thought into what I want to communicate here, how it looks, how it feels, uh, and all that kind of detail. I want to I want to sweat that stuff. So uh, so that's it. Hope you found this interesting. A little more behind the scenes as I get ready for the launch. And uh, by the, again, by the time this comes out, uh, the version 3.4 should be live. So you can go get that.
from the App Store. It's got a bunch of new features, uh, sharing with friends and family. You can see where to watch stuff now, which is awesome. Um, there's shortcut support if you're a nerd. Uh, you can do that. But uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.